Are you moving to the Cleveland area and are worried a little bit that you're not going to fit in with the locals? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know on how to fit in like a Clevelander. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland. I'm Patty, Patty Sells CLE, and I make videos about all things Cleveland and Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and even down South. You know the drill. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, leave me some comments. I love them. And let's just get started. Okay. First thing you're going to want to do when you get to Cleveland is establish yourself as an east sider or a west sider. There is kind of this huge divide, east side versus west side. Nobody has anything against each side, but you're definitely, there's some differences in some cultural barriers and you're going to, and you've probably already figured out if you're moving to Cleveland, you're either, you're either moving to the east side or the west side or maybe down south. Um, but let me just give you a little, re, a little, info on you know some differences in the on the two sides so east side is a little bit more we call it um blue 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 money like blue blue blood older money beautiful homes older homes uh shaker heights the older cleveland heights just absolutely gorgeous stately mansions so a lot more older homes that's where the culture is our museums are over there on the east side at university circle we have Little Italy over there. So lots of things to do culturally over there. Um, so that is the east side. Now the west side, they say it's a little more blue collar, which I wouldn't think say so. Uh, but the west side definitely has, it's new money. Uh, when you head out further west, like Westlake, Avon, Avon Lake, you get a lot more newer construction. Not that you don't have it on the east side, but you really don't have those old, old homes, those mansions on the west side like you do on the east side. Um, it's a little more easier to navigate, whereas on the east side, it's hard to get around on the east side. And, and they did it on purpose. You know, it was, everything was built before highways came about. And, and now, like, and I've done a video and I've talked about it so many times, like to get to Shaker Heights, there's no good way. You have to get off the highway, go down this opportunity corridor and um, drive through some shady neighborhoods to get in there. So <clears throat> that's the east side for the west side versus the west side. So decide which one you are and then embrace it. Um, okay, so speaking of traffic and getting places, um, people in Clevelanders, you know, we don't really talk about, you know, how far is it away? How many miles is, is it to downtown? we usually say, how long is it going to take me to get there? Um, like if you're living in Chicago, which we consider Chicago, I consider Chicago like a bigger Cleveland. Um, a lot of the same uh, Midwestern, you know, people are nice and everybody's nice to each other. I just feel like at home when I'm in Chicago. In fact, I have cousins and my stepbrother live there and because they feel at home in Chicago. But to travel there and to drive someplace, it might only be 15 miles away, but it's going to take you an hour to get there. Not so in Cleveland. Uh, if there is a traffic jam, it's rare and it's a pain in the neck. Um, last Friday, I had to go to Chagrin Falls, which should have been 50 minutes away. And it took me over an hour because, and it's quite far. I was going from the way west side of not even Cleveland, Lorraine County, all the way to the east side, Chagrin Falls. So 50 miles really means 50 minutes basically. But because we had a couple, they weren't even traffic jams. They were slowed outs. They were a couple bottlenecks. I was like three of them I had. That's so rare. So A, we don't have traffic jams. If you do, it's like what, who died? Um, and B, you can get pretty much anywhere in the Cleveland area in 30 minutes or less. I can get to downtown and I'm so far West. I can be downtown, um, parked and at the West side market in 30 minutes. So more, you know, everything's between 20, 30 minutes away. And people who I've sold homes to, they, they, that's the first thing that they remark on is like, it's so close. It is. It, everything is, you know, it's easy to navigate Cleveland. So traffic is good here. Okay. Another thing you're going to want to do to be considered a local is get to know the flats, get to know Ohio City, get to know Tremont, get to know Gordon Square, get to know Little Italy. These are the hot spots around Cleveland. Oh, get to know Coventry. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing out a bunch of things, but let's start with the flats. It's right downtown. It's a hot spot. Um, it's been around forever. It's right on the Cuyahoga River. And there's two banks. We have the East Bank and the West Bank. Go down there, explore. A lot of people, 
And most of my clients are people moving here from all over the country, have no idea what it's like down there. It's fun, they're cool restaurants. There's this awesome brewery with amazing food. Um, you can sit outside on the, on the Cuyahoga River and it won't catch on fire like it did in the 70s. They've cleaned it up. Um, you know, have a, have a bite to eat, have a drink, watch the freighters come through. It's absolutely beautiful. And then on the west side, you have Shooters, which is an institution. It's been around for as long as I have, if not longer. You know, you can pull up your boats, have a meal, um, beautiful scenery. It's just awesome place. Check out the flats. You won't be disappointed. And then Ohio City. Let's talk about Ohio City real quick and Tremont. They're on the near west side, right, right outside of downtown Cleveland, restaurants, bars, shops, you got to check those places out. Even if you're living in the suburbs, get down there, know them, love them, enjoy them. Okay, so you're moving to Cleveland. We are a huge sports town. Uh, don't come here thinking you're going to root for Michigan because nobody's going to like you. Uh, I married a Michigan fan and he brings on a lot of trouble for himself because he flaunts his Michigan gear. We love the Ohio State Buckeyes um, and that's college. Local teams, we have the Guardians. Uh, they used to be the Indians, no, no longer anymore. Cool story about why they became the Guardians. Obviously, Chief Wahoo was offensive, even though most everybody still wears their Chief Wahoo gear. Um, but the Guardians, and we had a big contest about what we should name the new team, and they came up with the Guardians, and it's named after the Hope Memorial Bridge because they're called Guardians, and I have a picture up here of this bridge. And it's, these statues are beautiful, and it's called the Hope Memorial Bridge because Bob Hope's dad was a mason on that project when that bridge was being being built, so pretty cool. So uh, the Guardians, they had a crap year this year. They didn't even make it to the playoffs, but they have... You know, they're one of our more successful teams going to a baseball. I didn't even get to a baseball game this year. Um, get to a baseball game. They're super inexpensive. You can get these district tickets. They're standing. They have these tables you can stand at. I think they're $15. And then you get a $5 voucher to get a beverage of your choice. So pretty cool. Lots of fun. Um, they have all kinds of events there. It's super fun, inexpensive. And that's another thing about Cleveland. Everything around town, you can do so much stuff for a fraction of what you would pay in bigger cities. Um, so get down there, enjoy it, take advantage of it. Uh, and then we have the Cleveland Browns. Woof, woof, woof. Um, and you've got to be a Browns fan. My husband now, who grew up in Michigan, in outside of Detroit, he is not a Detroit fan, a Lions fan. He is a Browns fan, uh, which so I forgive him a little bit for being a Michigan fan. But the problem about being a Browns fan is they start off the year, oh, we're going to go all the way every year. I'm like, you guys, give me a break. It's not going to happen. And right now they're already saying Deshaun Watson is probably not going to play. And he's our only saving grace right now as, as far as I know. I don't even follow it anymore because it's like I've been here my whole life, never seen him do anything. So whatever. But everybody is a diehard Browns fan. Everybody goes down and they tailgate at the Muni lot. And you need to know about the dog pound because that's the place to be. Um, lots of fun. I've been in the dog pound. It's so much fun. You, you get to a point where you don't even care if they're going to win. Of course you care, but you just expect it. And tailgating at the Muni lot. So much fun. They play cornhole. They bring these buses that have all decked out in browns colors and memorable memorabilia. Everybody wears their browns gear. Um, super fun. I've only done it once, but I had a blast. So go to a Browns game, tailgate, you become a Browns fan. And then, of course, everybody knows the Cavs because they won the championship with LeBron. People, so I never follow ba basketball. Uh, we still love LeBron, even though we hated him when he left the Cavs. How many years ago? My son burned his jersey. Uh, but now, in the joke is, we would vote for him if he ran for mayor. Like, he is just beloved. So, love the local sports teams. All right, speaking of sports, you need to know as a local Clevelander what the Holy War is. The Holy War is a high school football rivalry between two private Catholic high schools, St. Ignatius and St. Edwards, um, and it's every year, they just had the game, St. Ed's won this year, they make a big to-do about it, they talk about it on the news, they put it, you know, 
well, we used to get the plain dealer. I don't even know if they make the plain dealer, you know, but it'd be the front page of, you know, the plain dealer, <clears throat> the holy war. When I was in high school, St. Ignatius, I rooted for St. Ignatius because I went to an all girls school and that was the, t that was the school that the boys we hung out with were from Ignatius. So, and when I was there, Ignatius won every single year. So they go back and forth and people to this, you know, even alumni who have been graduated for, you know, 50 years still root for their team. It's a big deal. It's hard to get tickets. It's usually sold out, but know what the holy war is. All right, let's talk about local stores. As a Clevelander, you're going to need to shop at local stores. And first one I'm going to talk about is Discount Drug Mart. They're everywhere. It's just a drugstore. It's just like CVS. There's probably one on every corner. And their lingo is Discount Drug Mart saves you the run around. Get to know that. It's going to get in your head and you're going to be so sick of it. Uh, get your prescriptions filled there. You can pay your utilities there. Uh, they have a deli counter. You can probably think cheap clothes there. My husband buys these long sleeve t-shirts for like four bucks. Um, Drug Mart is awesome. Make that. Don't go to CVS or Rite Aid. Go to Drug Mart. It's the best. Um, also, Mark's. Mark's is a grocery store. It's all local. This is a Cleveland brand. There's Mark's everywhere. Everything is discounted. Um, I like to buy these Cleveland hot dogs. They're like, oh my god. They're so good. But they're like 15 bucks. They're all like coiled together, like the real hot dogs uh, with the real casings. And you can get them there for like 10 bucks. But they're 15 bucks everywhere else. And they have such good specials. They have closeouts with like home decor stuff, like holiday stuff. They even sell furniture. Um, when I lived close to a Mark's, when I lived in North Olmstead, I went, that's the only place I would go grocery shopping. I really didn't go anywhere else because everything was right there. They had a deli counter. They, you know, just sold it pretty much. I, there was nothing I couldn't find there. So Mark's and Drug Mart, go there. All right, let's talk about Cleveland food. Cleveland has become a foodie town. Um, we're on the Food Network all the time. All these amazing restaurants. I'm sure you've seen a bunch of them. Michael Simon is our food hero. He actually went to St. Ed's and he grew up in North Olmstead. So he is a local, local guy. Um, so He's got a couple restaurants around, but he's also inspired all these other people. It's a small community of these chefs and explore the restaurants. But before we were a foodie town, we always had these just local favorites. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is pierogies. Pierogies are these wonderful like dough, like potato stuffed pillows of dough and they're beautiful. And you put like saute them and then you put some onions on them or some sour cream and they come in, they make all kinds of pierogies. And the best place to get them is in Parma, Parma pierogies. But you can make them with potato and cheddar and onion in them. Some people put like make pizza pierogies, Reuben pierogies. They've just gone crazy with what you can put in these little pierogies. So get yourself some pierogies. If you go to that West Side Market, which is of course the one thing you need to do, the first thing you do when you get to Cleveland is go to that West Side Market. They have all local Cleveland foods and they, they carry Parma pierogies. I think they're Parma, they, pair, they carry pierogies, all different flavors. So pierogies, uh, Slimans, corned beef. Oh my gosh, look at this sandwich. It is this thick filled with corned beef. And on St. Patrick's Day, the line is out the door. Absolutely the best corned beef sandwich you will ever have. In fact, people will go and they'll go on their lunchtime because it's downtown Cleveland and they'll buy one sandwich and then they sell loaves of rye bread and they'll take it back to the office and they will share the one sandwich and make like 10 sandwiches out of it because there's no way you can eat this much corned beef. So you've got to check out Slimans corned beef. Um, next, let's talk about Polish boys. Oh my gosh. This is a Cleveland, Cleveland delicacy. A Polish boy is a Polish sausage on like a hoagie bun and then they put French fries on top and then they put coleslaw on top of that and then they sprinkle, they drizzle hot sauce over it. And it is the best. Um, there's places all over the city that sell them. Uh, when I was in college, I went to John Carroll on the east side and we would go to this place on Cedar Road. I cannot remember the name of it. And oh my God, especially at like two in the morning when you know you're done being a college kid, my roommate and I, we would split one because we and we could barely finish half of it. Polish boys, the best. They even have like Polish boy contests. Love it. 
Um, what else do we need to talk about? Oh, let's talk about stadium mustard. You need to have stadium mustard in your refrigerator. And there are two kinds. There's Bertman's and then there's stadium mustard. And the two guys, Bertman started it. And then this other guy started working for him and was, and they only sold to the stadium, Cleveland Stadium, which housed back then the Browns and the Indians. So they, they shared the stadium. So they only served stadium mustard there. And then this guy got hired to help him, I don't know, promote the brand. And he's like, hey, let's get this mustard into the grocery stores. And Bertman was like, nope, I'm sticking with the, sticking with the stadium and that's it. And so the other guy, he broke off, created his own brand. I guess it's supposed to be a different recipe. They taste the same to me. I can't tell the difference. In fact, I don't even know, whatever you get in the store, some stores have Bertman, some have stadium. It doesn't matter, but make sure you have it in your refrigerator if you want to be a local Clevelander. All right. Now let's talk chocolate, my favorite. Mally's Chocolates. They're a Cleveland institution. Local guys, the Mally family. This is the most amazing chocolate. You cannot have Easter without Mally's Chocolates. Uh, one year uh, we spent, my kids were little, and we were in Florida for Easter, and I did not have the foresight to buy Mally's Chocolate before we left because the Easter Bunny was coming to Florida. And so I had to go to the store and just get whatever crap chocolate I could find and my kids were so disappointed that they did not have Mally's chocolates. So get into a Mally's chocolates and you're probably going to get hit up. They also do fundraising and they have these chocolate bars and you get boxes of them. And when my kids were little, I was always peddling a box of chocolate bars. I mean, when I used to be a Cleveland teacher, I'd bring them to school. The kids would buy them. Teachers would buy them. I couldn't get enough boxes of Mally's chocolate bars and they're so good. I think I only sold them for a buck back then. Oh, the pretzel ones. Oh, so good. Mally's chocolates. Get to know them. Okay. And then let's stay on the sweets. And this is a newer <clears throat> institution, but for ice cream, Mitchell's ice cream is a must. I won't eat any other ice cream. If I'm going to treat myself to ice cream, I have to go to Avon, which is the closest one. And they used to start, it started in Westlake, but now their headquarters is right on West 25th Street. Um, and I have a picture of it up here, which was dangerous for me because when I first started selling real estate, my office was on West 25th Street. And especially during the summer, I was like, oh, I worked hard today. I deserve some Mitchell's ice cream. And I would go get a scoop. Um, my favorite is this bum, bum, berry crisp. I don't know. It's so That's the only thing I get. It's so good. But at Christmas time, they have this like peppermint stick. And then you can make a hot fudge sundae over with it. Oh, my God. It's so good. Uh, only Mal or Mitchell's ice cream. And then last thing is we say pop. And I have this map up here and it's a Midwestern thing. And Cleveland's not the only place that says pop. But if you want to be a local, say, what kind of pop do you have? You know, we don't say really soda. You can get away with it. They know what you're talking about. Kind of not like when I went to Boston and I asked what kind of pop they have and they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what is pop? Uh, but even like when you go to like, convenience store or 7-Eleven or drug mart they'll have signs in the in the window pop for sale pop on sale or whatever so you do see that so say pop not soda okay when you're driving around Cleveland you're gonna notice some pretty crazy billboards like this one and I'm using both my fingers because I never know which side it's gonna go on when I edit it uh this guy Tim Mizney he's a local guy he actually went to John Carroll he's a lawyer he's a personal injury lawyer and he had video, he started with his commercials where he's like, you know, make the, I'll make them pay. So his billboards started out with, I'll make them pay. And now they're just his eyes because he's got this like crazy thing he does. So great guy. They're everywhere. You can't, you can't drive a mile on the highway and not see at least two of his signs everywhere in Northeast Ohio, everywhere. Uh, so know these signs. He is an institution. In fact, a couple years ago, a little kid dressed up as him for Halloween and it went viral. I put it on, I don't know if it went on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, but it went viral and Tim found out about it and he actually sent him all kinds of like Tim Misney swag, like coffee mugs. I can't remember. It was on the news. Super, super nice guy. So you're going to see all of these um, <clears throat> billboards everywhere. And of course, you're going to get to know all the local jingles, just like every city has. Like, and I already just sang you the discount drug mart one. And then there's uh, two, nine, three, what is it? There's all kinds of, you'll get to know them like Serpentini, American and proud of it. And 
I want to see you in a Ken Canley Kia. And it just goes, they're annoying, but you're going to get to know uh, these, these little jingles. And that's just being a Clevelander. Okay. Next thing you need to know about how to fit in as a Clevelander is to learn Cleveland's holidays. Cleveland likes to have a good time. And one of our biggest holidays is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I've been involved with St. Patrick's Day Parade since I was a little kid. I've marched in the parade for years and years and years. Um, I did not last year because I was in Florida, but the year before, here's a picture of me in my pretty little uh, marching uniform. I'm part of the West Side Irish American Club. Because guess what? There's an East Side one too, and we are, you know, we compete against each other. So my kids all marched. That parade draws in the crowds, rain or shine, because March 17th, it's still winter, and it can be 80 degrees like it was this particular day, or it can be a blizzard. And I've been in the parade both times. Super, super fun. The sounds, there's a certain sound of the St. Patrick's Day parade. People blowing their horns, yelling and screaming. It's such a good time. Get down there, check it, check it out, take the day off of work. People take the rapid down there, which is our um, public transportation. You park in one of the rapid parking lots and you hop on that rapid and it drops you right off of the terminal tower in Public Square and walk around downtown. It's such a fun time. St. Patrick's Day, we do it right. We have one of the biggest parades in the country. Get down there, check it out. Another new one that we've started in the last few years is called Dingus Day which is the day after Easter. So it's a Monday. <clears throat> a lot of people had to take that day off anyway. So it's right on West 65th. They close down the streets. It's a Polish holiday. They have polka dancers. They have polka music. They have a parade. They ha um, have beer tents with Polish beer and good old Polish pierogies. Uh, so check Dinga's Day out. I'm trying to think what else that we celebrate that's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> oh, this happened just yesterday. And it's not that big a deal. People don't take, well, maybe some people do, but the tapping of Great Lakes Christmas Ale, they make a big deal about it. Um, so Great Lakes, Great Lakes Brewing Company is one of the first craft breweries in the country. It might even be the first. And they were the first ones to come out with Christmas Ale that was sold nationwide. And it's so good. It, it's trouble if you drink too many. And that the joke is, my did my kids did a TikTok. They have Christmas in July at the Guardians game, and they did this one thing like, "This is me after five Christmas sales," and <clears throat> they're funny. So, big thing is the Christmas sale tapping because now, and it's it's the middle of October, and you know, because nobody wants Christmas sale in in January because this stuff is potent. They put a cinnamon rim on it. It's good, good stuff, and now everybody's taken over the craze. Last year, at like the week between Christmas and New Year's. My daughter and her friends, they rented this party bus and all the parents came and we did a Christmas ale tour. And of course we started at Great Lakes and their bar is awesome. They have an upstairs and downstairs. They have it all decked out for Christmas. Their food's amazing. It's one of my favorite spots to go to. And we went all around town to places that had Christmas ales. Super, super fun. Okay, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do to fit in as a Clevelander is get yourself some Cleveland swag. Get some clothes. Here's mine, this is my husband's brown shirt. I have so much. You should have at least 15 pieces of Cleveland apparel. There are so many shops around Cleveland, West Side, East Side, in the mall where you can get Cleveland stuff. I mean, anytime you walk around, you see people, that's all they wear is Cleveland shirts. I need more. I, have, I can't find my Cleveland sweatshirt. I, I think it's in my, one of my cars, but I have one that just says Cleveland on it. It's in the Browns colors. That's what I wear to when I watch the Browns game. But make sure you get yourself some apparel, hats, uh, sweatshirts, t-shirts. There's so many cool places. They all have their own different take on it, but make sure you're wearing Cleveland gear. And lastly, a great way to get to know Cleveland, there's two ways. One's on TV, I recommend. It's on Channel 8. Of course, you're gonna need to know the, the, the three stations, three, five, and eight. Three is NBC, five is ABC, uh, and eight is Fox. Those are the one 19 is, what is 19? I don't know what 19 is, but anyways, 19 something. So Fox 8 News, they have, it's called New Day Cleveland and everything's local. They'll bring in all these people who are making their apparel and like local soap makers, local jewelry makers, they go on trips and they 
travel to all these new restaurants around town. They do one tank trip. So check that out. You can probably stream it online if you haven't moved to Cleveland yet. New Day Cleveland, Channel 8. And lastly, subscribe to the Cleveland Magazine. This will tell you everything you need to know, and a lot of the ideas I get for my videos come from this magazine. Um, they come out with, and I talk about it, every year I do Cleveland Magazine's number one suburb. I always do it, and it comes from this magazine. Um, lots of great stuff. In fact, after the pandemic, when the parade came back, uh, I was in the magazine. My picture of me and my my, uh, my drill team, we were, we were in, I don't know if we were on the cover, but we were definitely in the magazine. That was really, really exciting. So I highly recommend you pick up a copy of this or better yet, subscribe to it. Um, it's a great source of information. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're planning on enjoying living in Cleveland. I've sold so many houses to people in the Cleveland area from all over the country. And I've yet to have one person come back and tell me, this town is a dump. In fact, they're all like so surprised. And I'm like, why would you be surprised? I do all these videos. You've been watching all my videos. You can tell I love it here. Um, so enjoy Cleveland. And if you're looking to move to the Cleveland area, anywhere on the east side, west side, down south, I know this area like the back of my hand. I've lived here my entire life. Um, so give me a call, send me a text, send me an email, all my info's down there and enjoy.